good evening students just one minute hello students so welcome to dams predictor series one important topic uh, for neat exam is approach to plural disorders so frequently asked question plural disorders i am going to help you to learn how to differentiate plural effusion pneumothorax clinically radiologically and also we are going to see various causes so clinical basis i'll try to make it as crisp as possible for your exam these are all uh, plural collections see there can be air or fluid so whenever there is air or fluid so the intraplural pressure can increase and it can cause push of media stein up to opposite side of the disease that's why these plural diseases are generally considered as pushing lesions they can be considered as plural space occupying lesions if it is filled with the fluid we call it as plural effusion plural effusion if the pleura is filled with air we call it as pneumothorax so either plural effusion or pneumothorax like i told you these are pushing lesions if suppose that is right sided pleural effusion your trachea will be shifted towards the left if there is left sided pneumothorax your trachea will be shifted towards the right coming to clinical differentiation percussion now if you consider this is normal level of lung resonance if you percuss on a healthy lung healthy lung it is considered as normal resonant node anything more than that it is called as hyper resonant in some books also written as tympanic node anything slightly less than normal resonance it is called as impaired node still less it is called as dull node maximum dullness it is called as stony dull node maximum dullness it is called as stony dull node now anywhere stony dull node if it is present it is suggest you of fluid in the pleural cavity now see here this pleural effusion is a fluid so whenever i percuss whenever i percuss what do i get i get a stony dull node whenever i percuss on the lungs i am going to get a stony dull node whereas pneumothorax it is excess air in the pleural space it is excess air in the pleural space whenever you percuss you are going to get a hyper resonant node a hyper resonant node also called as tympanic node now coming to breath sounds now because of pleural effusion breath sounds depending upon the amount of fluid breath sounds can be diminished to absent breath sounds can be diminished to absent whereas pneumothorax also depending upon the severity of pneumothorax breath sounds can be diminished to absent clinically both pleural effusion and pneumothorax are pushing lesions on the side of the disease See, if at all there is right sided disease, one important point in clinical examination is on which side the disease is present. On that side, the movements will be decreased. So there will be decreased movements on the affected side. It will be a pushing lesion. If the disease is on the right, trachea will be towards the left, and breath sounds can be diminished to absent. Most important clinical finding to differentiate these two conditions is percussion. most important clinical finding is percussion in percussion pleural effusion will have stony dull node whereas pneumothorax will have hyper resonant or tympanic node now coming to the chest x ray because it is fluid chest x ray very simple anything containing air will appear black 
anything containing less air or anything containing less air or no air will appear white very simple just x-ray anything containing air appears black anything containing less air or no air tends to appear white now this pleural effusion is complete fluid collection so what will be the color of opacity on the chest x-ray yes it will be a whitish abnormality and it is fluid within the pleural space you will notice this classical meniscoid fluid level what is this uh, meniscoid fluid level that i'll show you in x-ray now coming to pneumothorax it is excess air anything having more air will appear very black very black is also called as hypertranslucency there will be a hyper translucent area there will be a hyper translucent area now this excess air will start compressing the adjacent lung margin that is hyper translucent area with compressed lung margin with compressed lung margin very important both are pushing lesions but whenever there is pleural effusion what do you notice a whitish density with meniscoid fluid level whenever there is pneumothorax whenever there is pneumothorax what do you expect hyper translucent area with the compressed lung margin hyper translucent area with compressed lung margin how to differentiate clinically with the help of percussion radiologically it is very simple fluid is white air will be very black now this is a chest x-ray of a patient with pleural effusion how did i conclude now if you notice now if you notice here students what has happened this is the trachea the trachea appears to be shifted to left and a heart shadow is also more towards the left and you can notice there is fluid level there is something white so this is a whitish density and it is having a meniscoid fluid level so it is a white abnormality whitish abnormality with meniscoid level with push of mediastinum to opposite side what is this entity called as this entity is called as pleural effusion this entity is called as pleural effusion then another x-ray this patient is said to have pneumothorax to call it as pneumothorax frequently as in your exam is they will ask you to identify pneumothorax x-ray first thing i should identify blackish air that is hyper translucent area this everything is air apart from that what else i should identify students i should identify the compressed lung margin you can notice here students this is the lung margin that has got compressed this is the lung margin that has caused compressed and what has happened and what has happened to the heart shadow media stena it has been pushed towards the opposite side to call it as pneumothorax you should identify a hyper translucent area with the compressed lung margin with shift of mediastinum to opposite side of the disease i hope now you will not get confused between pneumothorax and pleural effusion clinically and also radiologically now with this background let us see some other uh, examples of pneumothorax so that you can uh, have an uh, uh, habit of identifying the visceral pleural line so this everything is the air air and this is the compressed lung margin this is the compressed lung margin same thing even on this c teachers this is the air this is the air adjacent to that you should be able to identify the compressed lung margin you should be able to identify the compressed lung margin let us see approach to pleural effusion now you have identified it clinically as pleural effusion radiologically as pleural effusion now you have aspirated the fluid there is a patient with the pleural effusion you have aspirated 
Now you need to know the diagnosis of the pleural effusion. Approach to pleural effusion based on the LIDES criteria. Very, very, very important table for you. Based on LIDES criteria, pleural effusion can be classified into two groups. We have a transudative pleural effusion and other is exudative pleural effusion. A transudative pleural effusion and other is exudative pleural effusion. And what is the LIDES criteria to qualify for transudate pleural effusion? For transudate pleural effusion, pleural effusion protein by serum protein. Pleural effusion by protein, by serum protein, less than 0.5. Pleural effusion LDH by serum LDH, less than 0.6. If the protein ratio is less, LDH ratio is less, this can be called as a transudative pleural effusion. On the other hand, any one of the following. Protein ratio more than 0.5 or LDH ratio more than 0.6. LDH ratio more than 0.6. This phenomena is called as exudative pleural effusion. Whenever it is transudative pleural effusion, life is very easy because majority, majority of the transudative pleural effusions are systemic causes. So first important system is heart cardiac failure it can be due to cardiac failure then it can be due to kidney issue next system nephrotic syndrome nephrotic syndrome or it can be due to liver problem pleural effusion because of liver disease it is called as hepatic hydrothorax Pleural effusion because of liver disease, it is called as hepatic hydrothorax. Or it can be due to a procedure called as peritoneal dialysis. It can be due to a procedure called as peritoneal dialysis. And also hypothyroidism can cause pleural effusion. Hypothyroidism can cause pleural effusion. It is generally transudate. But we don't know why exactly the pleural effusion is happening. The exact mechanism is unclear. The exact mechanism is unclear. But in my clinical pra practice, whenever I come across transudative pleural effusion, it will be among these three only. Either cardiac failure, nephrotic syndrome, hepatic hydrothorax. In this, in this, in my clinical practice, cardiac failure, is most common cause of pleural effusion worldwide. Cardiac failure will be most common cause of pleural effusion worldwide. Cardiac failure is most common cause of pleural effusion worldwide. Now, what is the reason for uh, pleural effusion in these cases? For uh, fluid to be accumulated anywhere, second year pathology. Either it has to be increased hydrostatic pressure or decreased oncotic pressure. In cardiac failure, what happens? There will be increased hydrostatic pressure. Cardiac failure is generally, there will be increased hydrostatic pressure that will be responsible for fluid accumulation. Nephrotic syndrome is characterized by massive proteinuria that results in decreased oncotic pressure that can pull the fluid within the pleural space. Cardiac failure, the reason is increased hydrostatic pressure. Nephrotic syndrome, the reason is decreased oncotic pressure. Now, how will a liver disease be responsible for pleural effusion? Now, see here students, whenever there is a liver disease, ultimately there will be ascites. Whenever there is ascites, there can be increased pressure within the abdominal cavity. Generally, your diaphragm will be having tiny, tiny holes which will not be open during equilibrium. Whenever there is increased intra-abdominal pressure, these diaphragmatic holes will open 
and the fluid from the abdominal space can be transferred into the pleural space through the diaphragmatic pores. So write down this hepatic hydrothorax. The predominant mechanism is transfer of fluid. Transfer of fluid into pleura. Transfer of fluid into pleura through through diaphragmatic pores through diaphragmatic pores then coming to peritoneal dialysis you must be knowing dialysis if blood is used it is hemodialysis if you put a catheter in the peritoneal cavity it is peritoneal dialysis whenever you put a catheter you are going to inject some high concentrated fluid into the peritoneal cavity Whenever excess quantity of fluid is injected into the peritoneal cavity, again, increased pressure in the abdominal cavity, opening up of diaphragmatic pores and movement of fluid from the abdominal cavity into the pleural space. The mechanism of hepatic hydrothorax and peritoneal dialysis will be similar. This is transudate. Now, if at all, you find an exudative pleural effusion. If you find an exudative pleural effusion, life becomes very difficult because you have to evaluate for so many causes. First, you need to see, are you dealing with any malignant pathology? For that, you need to send for cytology. Cytology to look for any malignancy. Then cell count. You need to go for cell count to see what is the exact type of cell elevated. Cell count to see what is the exact type of cell elevated. Then you need to send for gram staining. Why for gram staining? To look for any infection. And most importantly, you should send for TB markers. So why TB markers? Because tuberculosis is considered as most common cause of exudative pleural effusion old wine. Most common cause of exudative pleural effusion old wine. What are the TB markers that you should routinely send? You should send for ADA. AD, adenosine D minus will be more than 40 international units. Next is interferon gamma. Interferon gamma. It will be more than 140 picograms per ml. Interferon gamma will be more than 140 picograms per ml. And this pleural effusion will be lymphocyte predominant. It will be lymphocyte predominant. Whenever TB is happening in my body, there will be some substances produced in my body. One such substance is ADA and other is interferon gamma. Apart from this, you should also look at the glucose. Any possibility of low glucose pleural effusion. In the sense, pleural effusion glucose pleural effusion glucose less than 60 mg percent pleural effusion glucose less than 60 mg percent and low glucose pleural effusions are generally seen with empyema empyema it can be seen with rheumatoid arthritis associated pleural effusion rheumatoid arthritis associated pleural effusion few malignant pleural effusions. You must be knowing empyema means pus in pleural cavity. What does pus contain? Actively dividing bacteria. What do bacteria uh, consume? Glucose. Malignancy actively proliferating few muscles. What do they consume? Glucose. In rheumatoid arthritis also just like arthritis there can be pleuritis. And all these inflamed pleural cells can have more metabolism. Thus, uh, that in turn can consume glucose. Because these pathologies consume glucose from the pleural space, there will be low glucose in the pleural fluid. 
then you should know what are the conditions responsible for high amylase pleural effusions. High amylase pleural effusions. These are particularly seen with pancreatitis. Very, very important. Pancreatitis. Next, esophageal rupture. Esophageal rupture. And a few malignancies. Now, first of all, why pleural effusion can happen with pancreatitis? You know that pancreas is an infradiaphragmatic structure. Whenever it is inflamed, it can cause irritation to the diaphragm. Because of this irritation, the diaphragmatic pores will open. And this pancreatic inflammatory fluid, now it will move through the diaphragmatic pores into the pleural space. And what does pancreatic inflammatory fluid contain? Amylase. Then next coming to esophageal rupture. Your esophagus is a mediastinal structure. Adjacent to that, there is mediastinal pleura. Whenever your esophagus is damaged, with that force, even the mediastinal pleura can be damaged. And the contents of esophagus will empty into the pleural space. What does esophageal contents contain? Saliva. And what is saliva rich in? Amylase. Few malignancies as a part of paraneoplastic syndromes. Those malignant cells, they themselves can secrete amylase. Because of that, there will be high amylase in the pleural effusion. Apart from that, you should also know about white colored pleural effusions, also called as high lipid pleural effusions. High lipid pleural effusions. So high lipid pleural effusion, the first type is chylothorax. The first type is chylothorax. This is due to rupture of thoracic duct. And diagnostic feature is pleural effusion triglycerides. Pleural effusion triglycerides will be more than 110 mg per cent. Second type of high lipid pleural effusion is pseudochylothorax. This happens because of accumulation of cholesterol crystals in long standing effusion, such as tuberculosis, rheumatoid arthritis related pleural effusion. Here, the characteristic finding is pleural effusion cholesterol will be more than 200 mg per cent. Pleural effusion cholesterol will be more than 200 mg per cent. This is the approach to pleural effusion students. This is a very, very important table in your clinical practice. Whenever you come across any pleural effusion, according to LIGHTS criteria, Try to know whether it is transudate or exudate. If it is transudate, think about these three systems. If it is exudate, think about any possibility of malignancy. So for that, you need cytology, cell count, gram staining to rule out any infection, TB markers to rule out tuberculosis, low glucose, high amylase, high lipid. With this, you can come to a conclusion regarding the etiology of pleural effusion. Apart from this, very commonly that we see in our clinical practice is paranemonic effusion. Write down paranemonic effusion. Paranemonic effusion. So I'm only telling you the important points that you should know here. Para pneumonic effusion is effusion related to either pneumonia, lung abscess, or bronchiectasis. A patient is having pneumonia, lung abscess, or bronchiectasis. That is responsible for pleural effusion. It is called as para pneumonic effusion. What are the features of uh, paranemonic effusion? Patient will have fever. Patient can have shortness of breath. Patient can have chest pain. Fever, shortness of breath, chest pain. Fever, shortness of breath, chest pain. Generally, whenever there is a paranemonic effusion, if you 
ट्रीट दी अंडर लाइंग इन्फेक्शन इफ यू ट्रीट दी अंडर लाइंग इन्फेक्शन रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर एफ्यूजन दिस एफ्यूजन विल ऑल्सो रिजोल्व ग्रेजुअली बट देर आर फ्यू सिचुएशन वेर यू शुड इमीडिएटली पुट एन इंटरकॉस्टल ड्रेन एंड कंप्लीटली एवैक्यूएट दी प्लूरल कंटेंट you should know what are those situations write down indications indications for active intervention indications for active intervention that active intervention is nothing but intercostal drainage intercostal drainage icd when you should immediately call your resident or your consultant sir this paranemonic effusion requires active intervention you should know first thing is you have aspirated the fluid and you are seeing pus pus in plural space anywhere pus should be immediately removed then plural effusion glucose glucose less than 60 mg per cent plural effusion plural effusion ph less than 7.2 presence of loculations loculated plural effusion if these are present it indicates there is some active inflammation happening within the plural space due to active infection point to remember here is if this is your uh, pleural space what is the adjacent compartment to the pleura it is the mediastinum whenever there is some active infection in the pleural space it has to be immediately removed because if that infection spreads into pleural space sepsis can develop very very rapidly then pleural effusion gram staining plural effusion gram staining you have seen the fluid in the microscope you have stained it is showing some organisms it indicates there is some active bacteria growth in that fluid so then also all the plural fluid should be drained point to remember here is not all paranemonic effusion requires intercostal drainage these are some special situations these are some special situations where the fluid should be immediately removed what are they pus in plural space plural effusion glucose less than 60 mg per cent plural effusion ph less than 7.2 presence of loculations plural effusion gram staining is revealing some organisms now let us see some clinical cases case number 1 this will be the new pattern they'll give you complete history images and they'll ask you the answer the bigger the question the easier is this is to solve because they give you lot of information when you have lot of information it is easy to come to a conclusion tell me the answer a 22 year old man is admitted to the emergency department after blunt chest trauma from steering wheel in a motor vehicle accident he is conscious and his vital signs are stable there is no evidence of other injury there is some chest trauma there is some chest trauma the chest radiograph is given they are asking you what is true regarding this condition now what is the diagnosis of this x ray students this is the right lung it is completely open whereas left side you can notice white tissue density meniscoid fluid level what else trachea it is going more towards the right heart shadow is also going more towards the right so it is a left pleural effusion now what are the true statements regarding left pleural effusion normal chest wall expansion on disease it said this is false whenever there is disease that side will not expand properly stony dullness on percussion true coarse crepitations are heard on auscultation no it is not bronchiectasis uh, to hear coarse crepitation it is pleural effusion breath sounds will be diminished to absent 
air bronchogram is not the classical finding air bronchogram is not the classical finding is also a true statement because air bronchogram is classical finding of consolidation it has no relation with pleural effusion so the best answer will be option c b and d are correct b and d are correct it is very simple if you know how to identify plural effusion clinically radiologically this question is a cakewalk for you case number two there was a 71 year old man smoker with fever fatigue and increased shortness of breath on physical examination the temperature is higher blood pressure pulse rate respiration rate is higher saturation is less Pulmonary examination reveals decreased vocal fremitus, dullness to percussion, decreased breath sounds over the right hemithorax. All these are suggestive of some right pleural effusion and also chest x-ray is showing right-sided pleural effusion. Thoracentesis performed uh, as shown. So I wanted to know what exactly is there. I have performed a thoracentesis and this is the appearance of the fluid this is the appearance so what is this fluid students this is a brownish fluid this is a brownish fluid so this is pus now pus in plural fluid is called as empyema and moreover they have given plural fluid analysis glucose 40 ph is reduced protein increased see any pananemonic effusion is exudative so protein can be increased but gram staining was negative see gram stain will not be positive in all if you find any one of the following pus or low glucose or low ph this is considered as active infection so immediately what should be done you should insert a chest tube and start antibiotics you should insert a chest tube. So the best answer is option B. Very good. So very good everybody. You have identified this as empyema. And your next step should be insertion of a chest tube and to start antibiotic. Insertion of a chest tube and to start antibiotic. This is brief review about pleural effusion. Now what is this condition? Escape of air into the pleural space. Escape of air into the pleural space and mediastinal shift. What is this disease, students? This is this is a pneumothorax. This is a pneumothorax. Already we have discussed the clinical findings, radiological findings. Let us see the classification of pneumothorax. Pneumothorax can be broadly classified into a spontaneous pneumothorax and other is traumatic pneumothorax spontaneous pneumothorax spontaneous pneumothorax it is of two types we have primary spontaneous secondary spontaneous traumatic in traumatic pneumothorax we have trauma happening in hospitals hydrogenic trauma happening outside direct chest injury direct chest injury example for direct chest injury is the one happening during road traffic accidents coming to primary spontaneous pneumothorax here there is no pre-existing lung disease there is no pre-existing lung disease this pre-existing lung disease is not there but still pneumothorax happens this mechanism is not clearly known why it actually happens exact mechanism is not known whereas secondary spontaneous pneumothorax there will be a pre-existing lung disease there will be a pre-existing lung disease because of this pre-existing lung disease there will be there will be pneumothorax what is the most common lung disease most common lung disease responsible for pneumothorax your answer should be COPD 
COPD is the most common lung disease responsible for pneumothorax. What is the reason? In COPD, there are hyperinflated areas called as bullas, which can rupture at any point of time, resulting in air escaping into the pleural space. Apart from COPD, tuberculosis, interstitial lung diseases, rare diseases such as Langerhansel histiocytosis, lymphangioleomyomatosis. All this would have been covered in your regular classes. So these diseases will also cause pneumothorax. Tuberculosis, interstitial lung disease, Langerhansel histiocytosis, LAM contains a cyst. This cyst can rupture tuberculosis it contains cavities cavities can rupture into the pleural space and uh, in ild there are honeycombing areas these are also abnormal ill filled areas which can rupture at any point of time resulting in pneumothorax these are all the lung diseases lung diseases which can cause pneumothorax lung diseases which can cause pneumothorax so saundarya ravichandran uh, malignancy can cause again it is simple common sense uh, saundarya there are many cavitating malignancies which will cause pneumothorax yes you have squamous cell carcinoma which forms cavities it can cause pneumothorax yes malignancy can cause it depends upon the pathology it is uh, uh, resulting in. if it is a cavitary pathology it can cause uh, pneumothorax we see very frequently coming to hydrogenic hydrogenic now what are the procedures in hospital that will result in pneumothorax we have thoracentesis thoracentesis and second important thing and second important thing invasive mechanical ventilation how will invasive mechanical ventilation and thoracentesis be responsible for example, I am asking my postgraduate to get some fluid from the pleural space. He inserts the needle very deep, not only damaging the pleura but also the lung. Uh, damage to lung will result in air leaking into the pleural space. Or as uh, Saundarya was asking, sir, can malignancy cause pneumothorax? See, there was a uh, right upper lobe mass and I wanted to get a sample through ultrasound guided FNAC. So I inserted the needle, I got the sample. After the procedure, pneumothorax can develop. So all this uh, insertion of needle into the thoracic cavity can result in pneumothorax due to damage of lung. Invasive mechanical ventilation. This is a positive pressure ventilation. Now there are your alveoli and these alveoli are very, very sensitive structure. If you give excess pressure to the an alveoli, if you give excess pressure to the alveoli, they can rupture. Rupture of alveoli results in air into the pleural space causing pneumothorax. And third important is insertion of central venous catheter. Insertion of central venous catheter. Insertion of central venous catheter. That too, especially subclavian catheter. Whenever you are uh, Peripheral veins are not accessible. You go for central venous cannulation. One is jugular and other is subclavian. If I want to reach the subclavian, I have to puncture beneath the clavicle. Whenever I puncture beneath the clavicle, lung apex might be damaged. Because of damage to lung apex, air escapes into the pleural cavity. Now, these are the, the important etiology of pneumothorax. Now, pathological forms. So we have a simple or closed type of pneumothorax, open type of pneumothorax, tension. But for your exam and in the emergency department, most important pathological type of pneumothorax is tension pneumothorax. Because tension pneumothorax is a life-threatening medical emergency, everybody should know. For development of tension pneumothorax, there will be presence of large air leak there will be presence of large air leak and this air leak this air leak functions as this air leak functions as one way valve or 
ball valve one way valve or ball valve let us see what is happening let us think this is the healthy lung around it there is pleural membrane on this side this is the diseased lung that has been responsible for the pneumothorax and this was the air leak air is leaking into the pleural space air is leaking into the pleural space now this air leak the exact reason and mechanism is not known they thought why there is function pneumothorax because this air leak was functioning as one way valve because of its one way valve function during inspiration all the air will come into the pleural space during expiration nothing is going out with each respiration there will be increased positive intrapleural pressure there will be increased positive intrapleural pressure this one minute there will be increased positive intrapleural pressure so because of this increased intra positive pleural pressure there will be compression of adjacent lung there can be very very important there will be compression of adjacent lung there will be compression of adjacent lung and that results in also see there is compression of adjacent lung initially and later mediastinal vessels and later mediastinal vessels whenever these mediastinal vessels are getting compressed there will be decreased venous return there will be decreased venous return that results in that results in decreased cardiac output that results in decreased cardiac output resulting in hypotension and ultimately shock now why this phenomena is called as a tension pneumothorax not because doctor is in tension because patient is having hypotension why all this phenomena is happening because of increased pressure in the pleural space what is pressure also called as tension all this is happening because of increased tension in the pleural space that's why it is called as tension pneumothorax patient is presenting with hypotension shock it is always a medical emergency medical emergency and clinical diagnosis no need to do any test to confirm it as pneumothorax if you just feel clinically it is pneumothorax it is sufficient to treat what are the important clinical features patient will have acute shortness of breath there will be absent breath sounds there will be absent breath sounds hypotension patient will be in hypotension and on percussion hyper resonant note if you find these in combination your suspicion should be tension pneumothorax your next intervention should be something saving the life of this patient what will be the next step or best step you should do something to save the life of the patient what is that insertion of wide bore needle insertion of wide bore needle followed by icd insertion whenever your suspicion is tension pneumothorax the next intervention will be insertion of a wide bore needle if you put a wide bore needle it will relieve the pressure 
once the pressure is relieved compression will be relieved circulation improves you can save the life of the patient now the question what is the <coughs> ideal site of needle insertion what is the site of icd insertion what is the site of icd insertion for icd insertion it is always single answer fifth intercostal space near mid axillary line mid axillary line whereas for needle insertion according to new guidelines to avoid confusion this is also fifth intercostal space mid axillary line mid axillary line if it is not given in the option the next best answer is second intercostal space mid clavicular line so i'm very surprised still few students are giving wrong answers kindly know this students even when you wake up from your sleep you should know what are the features of tension pneumothorax and where the needle should be inserted site of needle insertion according to new guidelines it is fifth intercostal space mid axillary line for icd also fifth intercostal space mid axillary line for needle if fifth is not given in the option you can go to the next option that is second intercostal space mid clavicular line second intercostal space mid clavicular line many students ask me so whenever i am inserting a needle what is the main precaution that i should take take uh, make sure see you should insert the needle in the lower part of intercostal space so in simple words if this is upper rib this is lower rib you want to insert a needle even if you don't know any anatomical relations see that you are inserting it in the lower part of the intercostal space in simple words for the newly joined interns this is what i advise so whenever you are thinking to insert the needle make sure you are inserting in the lower part of intercostal space now let us see the logic now if you consider this is the intercostal space this everything is the intercostal space in the upper portion of the intercostal space beneath the beneath the rib beneath the upper rib you are having so many intercostal nerves and vessels you don't want to puncture this with your intervention so if you insert it here so there are no intercostal vessels or nerves very very important this is the intercostal space always people will be confused is it a lower portion of the upper rib or upper part of the lower rib don't have such confusions very simple words this is intercostal space insert it in the lower part of the intercostal space which is roughly nothing but upper portion of the lower rib upper portion of the lower rib now for icd insertion we have a specific area called as triangle of safety so within the triangle of safety you have to place the icd most of you must be knowing the boundaries of triangle of safety the anterior bo boundary by the lateral edge of pectoralis major and the <coughs> lateral boundary by lateral edge of latissimus dorsi superiorly base of the axilla inferiorly by the line of the fifth intercostal space so generally i place it here so near the mid axillary line fifth intercostal space for convenience if you see the triangle of safety anteriorly the it is the anterior axillary fold that is nothing but pectoralis major posteriorly posterior axillary fold that is latissimus dorsi superiorly by the base of axilla inferiorly by the nipple line so that is usually fifth intercostal space so this is the area which is safe without any major vessels and cosmetic purpose also this is generally preferred for inserting icd inserting icd 
and according to new guidelines fifth intercostal space mid axillary plane is also for inserting needle try to solve this case so we uh, have reached the conclusion of this session let us see some cases a 64 year old male endotracheal intubation mechanical ventilation for copd you were called acutely to bedside when his bp drops to 70 by 40 breath sounds are inaudible on the right clear on the left what is the best course of action now this patient is having a dangerous combination what is that invasive mechanical ventilation plus copd more chances of patient developing pneumothorax now there is some acute decrease in bp so there is hypotension there is decreased breath sounds what should be your suspicion tension pneumothorax whenever there is tension pneumothorax don't even think about any other option it is just wasting time what should be the intervention saving the life of the patient by placing a large bore needle and alleviating the tension pneumothorax very good students all of you have got it right next case male with car accident dyspnea chest pain with anterior chest wall bruit peripheral pulses are present percussion tympanic knot normal uh, pelvis decreased breath sounds are left tachypnea and bp low now there is a trauma history there is trauma history along with that there is left side tympanic knot left side tympanic knot along with that decreased breath sounds all this put together it is pneumothorax the answer is pneumothorax now few students might have answered this as hemothorax yes i am seeing few people thinking it as hemothorax after trauma there will be hemothorax also can happen in few patients in few patients there can be pneumothorax but hemothorax is blood blood is a fluid so it will have findings similar to pleural effusion if it is hemothorax you must have come across stony dull knot stony dull knot you must have come across stony dull knot it is tympanic knot which is specific for pneumothorax now why can't it be collapse collapse again will give a dull knot it is false why can't it be cardiac tamponade cardiac tamponade can happen with the trauma history but it has nothing to do with the decreased breath sounds and most importantly it has nothing to do with tympanic knot in cardiac tamponade you are not going to get the tympanic knot by this we could uh, discuss uh, the important approach to pleural disorders pneumothorax pleural effusion before i conclude i want to tell all the students who are giving uh, neat pg 2021 there were many hurdles this year students your exam which has to be conducted in january it has been postponed to april now it is in the next month i know how uh, psych uh, psychologically you are disturbed and most of the students are affected by covid either personally or their relatives in some other manner it has been a tough situation so whenever you are uh, thinking like uh, stopping always think why you started so keep going thank you and all the very best students keep going thank you all the very best and i wish you success so we'll meet again uh, during the session for counseling for post graduation where you want to take this seat so you will definitely consult us we will uh, have a session to advise you till then all the very best students